and welcome to Divi Coaching. I'm really excited to be announcing a whole new series of videos that I'll be making in the coming months. Uh, by coming months, this is uh, January 2024. So I'm hoping to get um, a whole series of videos made uh, by the summer. And the theme of these is Divi Zero to Hero. And I'm starting right at the very beginning, assuming that you've got no experience, although I think even if you have got quite a bit of experience, if you watch even this first video, I would think you're probably going to learn something. But anyway, the idea is to take you through every setting, every module in Divi and get you to the point where you will be a hero and you will be able to Divi like a boss. So without further ado, let's crack on with the first lesson. And this is all about installing Divi and setting it up the way I would set up a new site. Let's get going. So I'm starting with a new installation of WordPress. At the time of recording this video, that comes with the uh, 2024 theme. So if I head over to the dashboard and into appearance and themes, you'll see that there are three themes installed, 2024, 2023 and 2022. And we want to add Divi. Now, you can't just add Divi in the way that you'd add many other WordPress themes by searching for it. If you look for it in the library here, you won't actually find anything. So the way you need to install it is by using this option at the top here, which is upload theme. And in order to do that, you need to have the theme downloaded in a zip format. To get that download, you need to go to the Elegant Themes website and you need to subscribe and you can then download and install the theme. You can do that easily by using the link in the description below. Uh, that is an affiliate link, so I will earn a little bit of commission from Elegant Themes for referring you. It won't cost you any more money and in fact you may well get a discount because I will give you the best link to give you the best discount that I know is available at the time. So if we do that, if we head over to Elegant Themes using my link, divicoaching.com, get Divi. It is giving us an offer at the moment. Uh, that discount does vary uh, depending on which package you buy. You'll see at the top here that there are two options, either a yearly subscription or a lifetime subscription. Personally, I have this $224. That's a lifetime subscription to Divi for as many sites as you want to use. However, there are some other options here worth having a look at, which include things like Divi AI, Divi Cloud Storage and Divi VIP support. You do need to bear in mind that those items are recurring subscriptions. So even though you pay this uh, lifetime fee at the top here, there will be a referring fee to pay as well. So this right hand column, a little bit more complicated. Left hand column, pretty straightforward. You either have a Divi lifetime license for unlimited sites uh, or you have a Divi, whoops, or you have a Divi yearly license for unlimited sites. So you need to go through this. You need to sign up. Once you've signed up and logged into your account area, you will see this screen and you will see two options. You will see a download for the Divi theme on the left hand side and on the right hand side, it says download the Divi plugin. Now, some people get confused by this and think that maybe you need to download both of these. As long as you are using the Divi theme on the left hand side here, you only need to download this one file. The other file, the Divi Builder plugin, is if you want to use the Divi Builder with a different theme, which is a possibility. Um, it's a whole different thing, not something I want to go into today. Um, I'm going to recommend that you use the Divi theme. Everything I'm going to be teaching is based on the Divi theme. So we just need to click on the left hand side here to download the Divi theme. Once we've done that, we can go back to our website. We can click on choose file. And here is the file that we've downloaded. So don't unzip it, just leave it as a zip file. Once you've selected it, simply click on Install Now. And this will uh, upload and install the Divi theme on your server. It doesn't take very long, um, less than a minute. And as soon as it's finished, we'll get a success message, which will come up here telling us that we have successfully installed the Divi theme. And once we see this screen, we can click on Activate to activate Divi. This will then take us back to the themes page and we can see that Divi is the active theme. Once I've installed and activated Divi, I always install a child theme as well. I have my own child theme, which is simply a blank template. Uh, there are plenty of others out there, but if you want to install mine and there's a separate tutorial talking about the child theme, 
then if you choose the link in the description below, it will download a copy of the child theme for you. So I've already downloaded it to my downloads folder. So I'm going to install it in exactly the same way as I installed Divi. So I'm going to click on add new theme, again, upload theme, choose file. And this is my child theme file. I'm going to click on install now. Once again, I'm going to activate it. And you'll now see that the active theme is the child theme from Divi Coaching and that the main theme is Divi and there are three other themes. Now, it's good practice to keep at least one standard WordPress theme in your system, but it's also good practice to not have too many. So I'm actually going to remove the themes that I'm not going to use and you simply click on them and choose delete and confirm. I'm also going to delete 2023, delete and confirm. So that's going to leave me with the Divi Coaching Child theme, Divi theme and 2024. The next thing we need to do is to activate our license so that we get updates for Divi. And to do that, again, we need to go back to the Elegant Theme site. We need to click on Account and we need to click on Username and API Key. That will take us to this area, the Members area. Um, it will show your username. I've, I've blanked that out but you need to know that because we'll need to be able to um, type that in in a moment. And we need to generate a new API key. Now, another thing that people do get confused about here is they tend to just generate one key, which you do literally by clicking that button, and then they use that key on lots of different sites. Now, that really isn't good practice. Divi gives you the option to generate a new API key for every site that you create. And the advantage of that is that in the future, say, for example, you do develop a site for a client and at some stage they then move away from you and want to get their own Divi license, you can come in here and you can just deactivate and delete the license key. And that's it. They no longer have a copy of, if you like, your license. So really good practice and a good thing to get into is not to use an API key for more than one site. So we're going to generate a new one. We're going to add a, a label for the reference here. So this is demo site and I'm going to put tutorial. And then if you hover over the key itself, it says click to copy. So I'm going to do that. I'm then going to go back to my site. I'm going to go to Divi. I'm going to go to theme options. I'm going to choose updates from the menu. Then I need to type my username in there and paste in my license key and then click on save changes. You'll see a little green tick there. And that means you have now successfully activated Divi. Now we've got the Divi theme and the Divi child theme installed, we can start to set up some more things. There's a couple of plugins that I, I like to include. The first one of those is um, Safe SVG, and that allows you to upload SVG logos and other graphics. OK, so now that we've got our Divi theme and our Divi child theme installed, there are a couple of plugins that I also like to install. The first one of those is called Safe SVG, and it allows you to upload SVG graphics files. So in order to install that, I'm going to head over to plugins again. I'm going to do add new plugin and I'm going to search for safe SVG. And here we are. This is the one safe SVG, 800,000 active installations. And I'm going to click on install now. This will allow me to upload uh, an SVG logo, uh, which is normally what I would use on a site. It's entirely up to you whether you install this or not, but it's a really easy plugin. If you're nervous about having uh, SVG uploads enabled the whole time, you can always deactivate it when you're not actually needing to upload something. But in my case, I tend to leave it activated. The other one I'm going to install is a free backup plugin called Updraft Plus, and this is a really easy way to keep backups of your site. When you start out, it's a really good discipline to get into to back your site up every time you finish work and probably every day or every week as well, depending on how quickly or how frequently you're updating your site. So again, click on Add New Plugin. We're going to look for Updraft. And we will find it here, Updraft. And we're going to click again on Install Now. You'll see there's over 3 million active installations. 
It's a very easy plugin to use. Um, you can get more sophisticated with it. You can put timed backups. You can back up off site to something like Google Cloud or there's all sorts of options. But at its very um, you know, most basic option, we'll activate it now. We will not go through the tips. So we're going to go into Updraft Plus. You'll see there's a setting at the top here. We're going to click on Backup and Restore. And we are simply going to say Backup Now. And we're going to include the database in the backup and we're going to include the files in the backup. Um, we're not going to allow it to only be deleted manually. Um, basically, the, the, the way Updraft works is it has rolling backups. So once your allocated space fills up, it will right over the first backup. If you want to just make a backup and keep it, and it's a good idea maybe when you've finished a site and you want to keep a permanent backup of it, you can check that option just for that backup. So I'm then going to click on Backup Now and it's going to make a backup of my site, which hopefully won't take very long because at the moment the site is pretty empty. And there we are, it's done. So we've installed Safe SVG. We've installed Updraft Plus and we've made a backup of our site. So now we can go in and we can start to set up Divi and we can start to set up the basic options that I like to set up in the customizer as well. OK, so let's start in the customizer. So to get there, we need to visit the site and then from the menu at the top here, we can go to Theme Customizer. I'm going to go into General Settings. I'm going to go into Site Identity. Um, I have my uh, site title here, which is Divi Demo, which you'll see at the top here. And if you like, you can add a tagline as well here. So learn with Divi Coaching. Uh, that will become the tagline for your site. The next thing we can do is upload a site icon, and this will stop you getting this little world up in the top here. So I'm going to click here to select site icon. And I don't have anything in my media library that I can use, so I need to upload a file. To do that, I choose this one, which is logo.png. I don't want to crop the image. And here we are. You can see my little logo in the top of the window. So those are all the settings we need to make in site identity. And we can move on to the next one now, which is layout settings. So enable box layout, we don't want to do that. Basically, just trust me, we don't want to do that. So we're going to leave that setting. Website content width. Now, by default, the content width is 1080. And by content width, you will see the full width of the screen is this full width here. And then the content width is the uh, width of the menu header and also of all your content on the page. Now, 1080 is very small. Uh, I would go with something like 1366. You can choose whatever width you want. And you're not stuck with this width because we can change it in the sections and in the rows once we get inside Divi. But it's always good to set a default here. And I find that 1366 is a good default. Uh, I wouldn't change the website gutter width. You can play with that later on if you want. And I also wouldn't change the sidebar width. Those kind of things are going to be overwritten in Divi. I would leave the section height at four and I would leave the row height at two. The next thing I like to set up is an accent color for the site. And by default, this comes as this blue. So always good to know what palette you're going to be using for your site. I use this fantastic site here called Coolors, so C-O-O-L-O-R-S, and you can generate any uh, sort of palette you want in there. Well worth having a look at, lots of different palettes that you can generate. So. This is the palette I'm going to be using for the demo, and this is my accent color. So I just have to click here and it will copy the hex code for me. I can then go back into Divi. I can click on theme accent color. I can paste in the code that I've just copied, and that will set my theme accent color. And again, that's all we need to actually change in this tab. Next one we're going to come on to is typography. And this is really important. Um, the sizing, uh, not so much. Uh, you can come and tweak the sizes of the different uh, headings and things if you want. But what is really important is that down here in the header font setting, you choose a default header font for your site. And by doing this, it means that if you ever want to change it at a later date, you just have to come back in here and change the default. And it will change the default option throughout your whole site. 
Um, if you don't do that, you can end up having to go into every module and selecting the font if you decide to make a change. So best practice, so I'm going to choose Ubuntu for my header font. You'll see it changed up there straight away. And I'm going to choose Nonito for my body font once I can find it. So we'll come down here and we will go into Nonito Sans. In fact, I'm going to choose for my body font. Next thing I'm going to choose is my body link color. Uh, normally links are blue, but if you want to choose a different color for them, again, I'm going to go into the coolers. I like this dark blue color for my links. So I'm going to click to copy that color. I can then go into body link color. I'm going to paste in that color and that's going to change my body link color to this nice deep blue. Um, next color is body text color. So by default, the text is this slightly uh, gray color and by default, the headers are uh, also that light gray color. So say you decided early on that you wanted your headers to be um, one of the other colors uh, from your palette. So you can choose this deep blue color. You can come back to your site and by coming down to header text color down here and by pasting that code into here, all your headers on the site will be this nice deep blue color. So again, that's started up here. So that's now set up our default font, our default sizing for our fonts and our various colors. Now, all of this can be overridden in Divi, but by setting it all here, the defaults will automatically be set. And that does make life a lot easier. So we can then come out of typography and the last section we can go in is background and background color. And we're not actually going to change that. So once we've done all of that, we can click on publish and we can come out of the customizer. And those are the settings that we needed to make. Now we can go in and we can start making some settings in Divi. So to do that, we come back to the dashboard. We come down to Divi and we go to theme options. First thing we're going to do is upload a logo. Now, again, this is not strictly necessary, but actually, if we have a quick look at the site, we'll see that by default, using the standard WordPress menu, there is a logo up here and the logo it shows is a Divi logo. If we want to change that for our own logo, again, we go to Divi, we go to theme options and this very first thing here, we choose upload and it's not either of these. I have a logo to upload, which is here. Um, this is the reason that I enabled the uh, Safe SVG plugin because my logo is actually an SVG file. So once I've chosen it, we say set as logo and that's done. Fixed navigation bar, we want to leave enabled. The gallery, we don't need to enable at the moment. Uh, the next thing I like to do is set up my colors. So we've got black and white, and then you know that we've already selected a palette. So although I've already chosen default colors in the customizer, setting up your colors here will give you a palette to easily choose from as you work on your pages. So I'm going to literally set these colors here to be the colors of my palette. So in order to do that, I say well, I'll leave black and white. I'll click on the red. I'll then go to the first color in my palette, click to copy, paste in the hex code, move on to the next one. Next color, click to copy, paste in the hex code. Next color, dark blue, paste in the hex code. Next color, is this bright yellow, paste that one in. And finally, we're going to go with the orange and we're going to paste that in as well. And we've got one spare color at the end. So my palette has now been set up in the color picker for Divi. Grab the first post image I'm going to leave disabled and also blog style mode I'm going to leave disabled. Um, sidebar layout is on the right. Um, Again, you can set up whether or not you have sidebars when we start setting up our Divi pages. But again, I'm going to leave all of this uh, enabled. Use Google Fonts. I'm going to leave enabled for now. Now, you might want to watch another tutorial I've got on um, how to host Google Fonts locally. I'll put, I'll put a link again below. Um, 
you probably saw that when I went into the customizer to set my default fonts, there was a huge list of fonts there. And I tend to just um, load the two or three fonts that I want for my site, which means that they are being delivered from my website rather than from the, the Google uh, CDN. CDN is a content distribution network. So basically, if you use Google fonts and you have this setting set in Divi, then when someone visits your website, uh, if they don't have that font installed on their system, they will go off to the Google server and it will automatically download that font for them. There are some disadvantages to this, particularly if if you're in Europe uh, and there have been problems with, uh, I think in Germany in particular, and GDPR, because that font will be retrieved before your site has a chance to ask visitors to agree to your cookie policy. So um, uh, entirely up to you. For the moment, we're going to leave Google Fonts uh, enabled. If you want to disable them and host fonts locally, see my other tutorial on that subject. Um, I'm not going to enqueue the Google Maps script because I'm not going to be using Google Maps. Again, that's another big thing really uh, to get into how to use Google Maps because you do have to sign up for a Google account and it, it's it's really quite a complicated process. That there, there are easier ways of embedding a map, which I'll, I'll go over in a later lesson. Uh, show Facebook icon, X icon, Instagram icon and RSS icon. Um, worth having all of those. If you want to fill in all of your profiles, you can do that, um, but I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, and you want to make sure you've got responsive images enabled as well, which means basically that, that Divi, uh, when you upload an image, will create various sizes of it and it will serve to your visitors the most appropriate size for the resolution that they're looking at the page in. So um, you know, that could be a wide desktop image or it could be a very small uh, mobile phone image. So good thing to have that enabled and click on Save Changes. So once we've done that, we can go to Performance. Uh, there's an awful lot of speed up options that are uh, enabled in Divi by default which helps with your site speed. If you have problems, and sometimes there are problems when you're building pages, there's no, not an issue in coming in and turning all these off and just turning them on again at the end. I tend to leave them uh, enabled unless there's an issue, so I'm not going to touch those. We're then going to go to navigation, um, exclude pages from the navigation bar. So um, if you want a particular page not to be included in the navigation bar, you can uh, choose that here. So this will list all of your pages. If you want to exclude some of them from the navigation, you can do that here. Uh, we want to show drop downs. We want to display a home link. Um, I don't really want to change anything else. In the builder, so enable Divi Builder on posts, pages and projects. Uh, I'm actually not going to enable it on projects. Projects is another type of post which Divi offers. If you're familiar with the concept of Word, WordPress posts, so a post is a type of post, a page is a type of post, and a project is a custom type of post which is provided by Divi. But if you're not going to use them, there's not really much point in enabling them. Layout. So when it comes again to your blog, you don't have to have all of these items appear. So if you don't want the author to appear on a blog post, you can disable it here. Um, again, we can worry about all of those options as and when we get around to building a blog page. Uh, show comments on posts. So you have the option to not have comments um, and you have the option to have thumbnails on posts. Single page layout. I'm actually going to leave these disabled for now. Um, again, if you uh, find out that you need to use them, then it's very easy to come in here and to enable them. General settings, again, on the post info section, uh, it will display author, date and the categories and thumbs will also be shown on the index pages. So I'm going to save all of those changes. Ads, I'm not going to worry with at the moment because we won't be advertising. SEO, uh, again, all of this is something that you um, don't need to worry about as you're getting started. Integration, uh, this is where we can add code that we want to be added to the head of our page, uh, possibly into the body, which we might use for Google tracking. Um, various bits and pieces. So this is just an opportunity to be able to add code into your uh, pages. Uh, again, we don't need to worry about those for now, but I would leave them all enabled. 
And finally, we can come back into updates. And this is where we input the username and API key before. Um, you shouldn't have to do anything else in here unless you have any issues uh, with Divi in the future. Maybe an update fails or something, in which case it's possible to come back in here and roll back to the previous version. The other thing you might want to do is to change your API key. Um, I say again, unlikely, but if for some reason it gets disabled or maybe you allocate it to another site by mistake and you want to change the one on this site, then you can do that here. So that's everything that I want to do in the Divi theme options section. Um, so I'm going to click on Save Changes here. One other section here that we're going to have a brief look in is if we come down to uh, Support Center and we then go into, well, you'll see at the top here it says System Status. Congratulations, all system checks have passed. Your hosting configuration is compatible with Divi. Now, it may be that that's not the case in your case. There may be some minor things that need tweaking. If you click on this uh, Show Full Report here, it will show you all the different um, stats that relate to your web server. Um, if you do see any of these that are not green, then please do talk to your host. So, um, for instance, very common ones would be memory limits or maximum file upload size. Uh, these, you know, this could be too small. Certain hosts I know do limit this, make this very small down to two megabytes. And you may already have uh, run into trouble uploading things like themes before now. So talk to your host and get them to sort all of these issues out. Whilst we're on this page, it's worth looking at a couple of other things. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see here it says Elegant Themes Support. And if you do need support from uh, Elegant Themes and you talk to them and they ask you to enable this, if you enable this, they will be able to access your system remotely and help you out with any issues. Scrolling down a little bit further, um, there is uh, Live Support here. Um, there is an option to join uh, Divi VIP, which gives you even better support, but you do need to pay for that. And then coming down again, there is a whole series of tutorial videos on how to use Divi. Uh, well worth having a look, but of course I'm biased. I think mine are going to be better. Finally, there is a safe mode, which you can enable or disable, which will tell you what uh, plugins it's going to disable. So we've only got two plugins enabled at the moment, Safe SVG and Updraft Plus. And if we are flip that switch over, it will actually disable both of those um, plugins. And if you're having problems with plugins, it's a good place to start without having to go through and, and you know uh, disable them one at a time. You can just come in here, flip them all off and then enable them again and hopefully that'll allow you to identify whatever the issue was. Okay, so that's everything we need to do in the Divi section. There are a few other things that I'd like to have a look at in the dashboard. So let's uh, start by having a look at those now. So the first section we're going to have a look in is plugins. And by default, there are a couple of plugins that are installed by WordPress. One is Akismet uh, Anti-Spam and the other one is Hello Dolly. Now, there are better anti-spam solutions, which we're going to look at later on. And Hello Dolly, um, it's, a, it's a hangover. It's a bit of a, of a WordPress um, legend, if you like. If you do activate it, let's just activate it for a minute. You get some lyrics from the great song, Hello Dolly, appear in the top of your screen. That's it. That's all it does. And every time you load the dashboard, you'll get another little line from the song up here. Really not something that I'm particularly interested in. So going to deactivate that as well. Uh, the point of coming into here is that any plugin that you're not using and you don't intend to use in the future, is a potential security risk and you should just delete it. So I'm going to delete Akismet and I'm going to delete Hello Dolly. So that leaves me with my two live plugins, my Safe SVG and Updraft Plus. So that's all we need to do in this section. I'm then going to go into Users. Um, this is me. Uh, if you want to change uh, how you see things on the screen, you can come in here and you can, for example, change the color scheme of your dashboard. So you can choose something wacky like ectoplasm or ocean or sunrise uh, or just stick with the default. Um, there's a whole thing about keyboard shortcuts. You can have a look at that and decide whether you want to use them or not. Show toolbar when viewing site. That basically is this. So when you go to the site and you have this toolbar along the top and if uh, as a user you are to disable that, which I'm not going to do, 
you won't see that toolbar when you edit the site. So um, it just makes it more difficult to get, get back in and edit things, essentially. Uh, language, site default. So here I'm in uh, English UK. Um, my name, email address, etc. This image, um, if you want your profile picture to appear as part of your, your user profile, you need to go to Gravatar. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Gravatar or not, but basically you go to Gravatar and what it does is allow you to globally um, set up a profile which is recognized on all sorts of forums and blogs and lots of places where if you log in with your credentials it will also automatically retrieve your photograph and WordPress is one of those things so this photograph you can't set up on uh, the site itself but you set that up on Gravatar Coming down a bit more, you can change your password and you can log out everywhere. So say you suddenly realise that you've um, logged in and left it logged in at work or in a cafe or on a public machine in the library or something, you can hit this and it will log out of everywhere and you can just log in and start all over again. OK, and again, we don't need to bother about this little thing at the bottom here. If you do need to worry about it, someone will tell you what to do. So that's all we need to do in users. Um, let's come into tools. Um, I've got a couple of warnings on site health that we looked at earlier. They're really not things that we need to worry about. I, I basically have a server that doesn't automatically update because I like to keep uh, updates manual and it's warning me about that. Um, what else is it telling me? Page cache is not detected, but the server response is OK. And that's because when I'm making tutorials, I, I do disable uh, caching. I do have a Cloudflare caching site, um, but I have disabled it for this site. And again, you really don't need to worry about that. Um, right, settings we do need to have a look at. So general, here's your site title. Here's the tagline, which we uh, entered in the customizer earlier, but you can always change it here. Uh, WordPress address. Now, you probably won't be. Well, it all depends on, on, on how your server works. Uh, on my server, this is hard coded, so it's not changeable here. There's an admin email address. Um, you can choose whether anyone can register or not. Uh, and if they do register, that's in other words, they can register rather than you registering them. I would strongly advise that you leave that off. And if you do uh, enroll a new user, what uh, default role they will have. And subscriber is a good one because it doesn't give them much control. Time zone, I'm in London. Well, I'm not, but London is my nearest time zone. My date format is UK and my time format is the UK as well. And I think the week starts on a Monday, but some would say a Sunday. But we could debate that for a long time. So once you're happy with that, again, save changes. We're then going to go into writing. Uh, we're not going to change anything in writing. And again, if you need to set this up, someone will tell you what you need to do. Uh, or there'll be some documentation somewhere which will tell you what to do. Reading, however, um, there are some options. So at the moment, when we go to the home page, what you're actually seeing is your latest blog posts. So this is the sample blog post that comes with WordPress. Um, you don't have to do that. So the other option you have is to choose a static page. Now, at the moment, we've only created one page. So if we want to set that page instead, so sample page as our uh, page, and we then hit Save Changes, now, when we go to visit site, we will actually go to the sample page rather than to the blog posts. And that's why I'm going to leave it on at the moment, because we're going to set up our home page uh, here as a page. So the only reason that you really would keep this set to blog is if you were going to run this site as a blog only. And therefore, you wanted the home page just to be the home page for your blog. In most other circumstances, you'd want the home page to be a page, and that page will probably be called home page as well. OK, so we're going to uh, save the changes here. Um, discussion. Again, I would leave these uh, settings all as standard. It really works on commenting. So again, if you're going to be running a blog and you want to control how commenting is going to work, who can comment, how you get notified about comments, uh, how comments get held for approval before they get published, that all happens in here. Media. Uh, there's little to really, again, look at in here. This is a, a hangover from WordPress uh, where it would, where you could define the sizes of the images that you would like WordPress 
WordPress to make. So basically when you add a new piece of media, WordPress will make images in three different sizes from your uh, original image that you upload. Divi, however, does its own thing. Uh, as, I, as I said before, in the uh, Divi section, when we looked at loading responsive images, Divi will create a number of images when you load them, more than just the three here, and it will use the most appropriate size of image uh, for wherever you're using it on the page. So again, we don't need to, to do that. At the bottom here, there is a setting for the safe SVG plugin that we loaded, and you can select which users can upload SVG files. Again, I would strongly recommend that only administrators of the site can do that. We, we don't want editors uh, editing a page and randomly adding some dodgy SVG. So stick that with administrators and save changes again. Next one, permalinks. So as standard, the link structure um, the permalink is, is the link that you see in this address line when you go to a page. Now, the standard one, you get a page number, and it's not very user friendly. The one that you will normally see used, and the one I recommend you use, is this one down here, post name. And uh, that's all we're going to do is to change that on this page. You will end up with the name of the page or the post in the address line when you visit that page. OK, and that's the last change that we need to make here. Uh, privacy. Um, again, you do need to look at and think about privacy policies, and that's something we will cover elsewhere. But this is somewhere that you can start looking and creating a privacy policy. But we're not going to do that today. Um, updraft backups. Um, this is basically Updraft Plus. So this is the same thing that happens if you visit this link at the top here. So again, I'm not going to go into detailed um, discussion of how to run backups at the moment. However, as we're here, and as we've made quite a lot of changes so far to the system, I am going to click on Backup Now, and I'm going to make another backup of my system now that I've set up all the options in Divi and uh, all of the other places that I wanted to set up this site. OK, so that's finished running. And the next thing we're going to do now is go in and we're going to make some pages and we're going to make a menu. So to do that, we're going to click on Pages. And we're going to click on Add New Page. And we're just going to put in the, you know, the standard few pages. So we'll do a home page. So we'll call that home page. And I'm just going to click on publish straight away. Uh, you don't have to do that, in which case it will stay as a draft. But I've just um, published it. I'm then going to come back and add another page. And I'm going to call this about us. Again, I'm going to publish it. And back again, add another new page. And I'm going to call this contact. Publish again. One more which I'm going to call services. And finally, I'm going to call one blog. And in a future lesson, we are going to look at how we can set up the blog page. So there we are. That has set up all of the uh, pages that I want. And I now need to set up a menu. So to do that, we come down to Appearance. We come down to Menus. And we give our menu a name. So in this case, I'm just going to call it Main Menu uh, and click to Create. And then I have some options here, auto add pages. So if you click this, whenever you add or create a new um, page, it will add it to the menu. I don't really want to do that. I like to have control of what gets added to the menu. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, this is a primary menu, and this is because it's in the primary menu location. So later on in Divi, for example, you might want to set up a footer menu, and that might be a secondary menu location. And you can define another menu in here to go in that secondary location. Well, actually, you've got a footer menu location as well. So they're basically just names that you can give menus, and then you can choose where they're going to appear. But we're going to have a primary menu in this case. I'm going to click on Save again. Now, I need to add everything that we've uh, so far uh, set up, so all the pages that we've built so far. I need to add them to the primary menu. So to do that, I'm going to click on Select All, and I'm going to Add to Menu. And it will put in a menu structure for me. Now, I don't want the menu in this order, so you can literally just drag things around. So I want a home page. Um, I want the About Us. You have to be careful it doesn't indent, because if you do indent it, it will be a sub menu item on the menu, uh, which you may want. But in this case, I don't. I want all these to be top level menu items. So About Us, then I'm going to go with Services, then I'm going to go with Blog, then I'm going to go with Contact. And once I've done that, I'm going to click on Save Menu. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to come back down to our reading menu. And because we've now created a 
home page. Instead of having a home page as the sample page, I'm going to call it home page and I'm going to save changes. I'm then going to go back to the pages and now I've created the pages that I want. I, I don't want the um, sample page anymore, so I'm going to bin that one. And I don't want the privacy policy page anymore, so I'm going to bin that one. So once I've done that, I go back to visit the site. You can see we've now got our logo. So that's being brought through from the setting that we set up in the Divi. Do you remember when we went down here, we went into theme options and we set up a logo. So that's the logo that we're seeing. And we're seeing a menu. So these are all the items that we've added to the menu recently. Normally I would use the theme builder, and this is something that we'll get on to uh, in a later lesson, the theme builder to build your header and footer. If you don't do that, Divi will give you a standard WordPress header, which as I say, looks something like this, although we can customize it. And it will give you a standard uh, Divi WordPress footer, which gives you two lines of footer. Now, there's a certain amount of customization that we can do to those. And let's have a quick look at how we do that now. So we go into the theme customizer. And if we come down to header and navigation, so we can go header format. So um, uh, you've got different navigations. We don't want vertical navigation, although you know that might be an option. Um, and we don't want to hide navigation until scroll. So that is another option as well that you can do. Um, so really, there's not much to set in here. Primary menu bar, so you do get some options in here. So we could, for instance, make the um, font all uppercase. Uh, we could change the color if we wanted to. Um, we can change the uh, size, so the menu height, so we can make the menu bigger. Um, we can charge, change the logo maximum height, so we can make the logo smaller, but that's without affecting the size of the uh, text on the other side. Actually, that looks a bit better, I think. Uh, we can change the text size. We can change the letter spacing. So if we want, we can spread our menu out. Let's give it a bit of letter spacing. Um, and we can change the font. So you'll notice at the moment it says default theme font. And, and that's um, what we did earlier on. We set a default font in the theme builder. But if you want your menu to be a different font, there's no issue. You can just come in here and change it to something different. I'm going to go back to default. And obviously um, you can change the uh, colors. So if we then come back to the next setting, we're going to go with secondary menu bar. So this would be a menu that would go in above the primary menu. Um, so we haven't actually defined a secondary menu, menu at the moment, um, but some people do have a little menu along the top of the screen. In fact, why don't we just go back and have a look? So if we go into the dashboard, we go into appearance, we go into menus. Let's define a secondary menu. So we're going to give it a new name. We're going to call this secondary. We're going to call it a secondary menu location and we are going to save it. At the moment it's not great because basically we've put the same items in our secondary menu as we have in our primary menu, but if we want to get rid of some of these. So we'll click on remove, 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 and we're just going to leave contact. And then say you want to jump to a specific part of your site, um, you could, for instance, add a custom link in. So I'm going to just simply add a custom link here, and this would link to somewhere on the site. So we can call it some link and we can add it to the menu. This could even be a link to an external website. But again, you know, if you do that, you've got a risk of losing your visitors quite quickly. So we have a secondary menu. We've got contact and some link, and we're going to save that menu. And we'll find that now when we go back to our site, we have a secondary menu above our primary menu. It takes the uh, accent color that we defined earlier on and it uses that and we have a little menu up here and that will take us to our contact page, which we haven't yet made, or will take us to some random link on our site. So now that we've done that, we can go back into our header and navigation and we can go into fixed navigation settings. So what this does, um, you, once there's a page in place here, when you scroll down, you will see that the menu bar gets a little bit smaller at the top of the screen, and you can set what happens to the fixed menu. So, so basically, um, if you choose, again, back in the Divi theme options, if you remember, 
one of the things that we had enabled was a fixed menu. So we said fixed navigation bar. And what that means is when you scroll, the navigation bar stays at the top of the screen. So in the customizer, in navigation, in fixed navigation setting, we can set the height of that fixed menu bar. Um, I can't really show it to you because you need a page here to be able to have something to scroll, um, but we will go over it in a later lesson uh, and it is something that you may well want to use. And if you do want to change the settings, you can change them here. Okay, um, header elements, you can choose what goes in the header. So this is the main header. So for example, you can choose to show social icons in the header and you can choose whether you show or don't show the uh, search icon. I really wouldn't show social icons in your header because what happens is people turn up on your website, they see the Twitter icon at the top, whoops, sorry, they see the X icon at the top, they click on that and you've lost a site visitor. So by all means, you can have links, but I would be really careful about where you put them. And personally, I think putting them in a header bar is a really dumb thing to do. OK, so let's publish that. And the next thing we're going to have a look at is the footer. So the layout of the footer, uh, we currently have one, two, three, four columns. You can't see that, but there's one, two, three, four columns in here. Um, you can choose the color for that footer. So um, if you don't want it to be quite so black, you can make it less black or you can make it um, one of our theme colors. Uh, so let's go with the nice yellow theme color. Actually, let's not. Let's stick with the black. Um, so you can do that if you want to change the column layout. So you could just change it to be one column um, or you could change it as a back to four. So you, you have various different options. Yeah, depending on how you want to set up your footer. Again, I almost never use this. One of the first things you'll be doing when you start using the theme builder is to build your own header and footer. So that's why I'm a bit rusty on these settings because they're really not something I, I use very often. Um, the next thing is widgets. Widgets, again, is a hangover from um, the original uh, WordPress. And you basically, this is where you can set up your colors for your different widgets. In terms of what actual widgets go in the footer, that's something, again, that you can set up from the WordPress dashboard. Again, I really don't use widgets. Uh, they're, they're a legacy, really. And you need to start building footers and headers in the theme builder. So I'm not even going to go over those. Um, footer elements at the moment, uh, social icons. So you can see down here the social icons are showing in the footer. And again, you can just click or unclick whether you want those or not. You've then got a footer menu. Um, so currently there isn't a footer menu, um, but you could have a footer menu. So in other words, if we defined one in the menu section a bit uh, earlier on, then that would show up here in the footer as well. And the bottom bar. So we have this bottom bar at the moment. I never think this is very easy to see, so I would go with the bottom bar text color as being a lot lighter. So there we are, we can see it. And I would go with the social icon. Not I think you should have them, but if you do have them, again, they should be a lot lighter as well. Um, one of the very common things I get asked is, how do you change this? And the simple answer is, if you highlight that text and you copy it, you paste it into this footer credits bar and you can then edit it. So I'm going to say designed by Divi Coaching, powered by, well, let's leave WordPress, WordPress and Divi VPS, which is my hosting solution. So that's how to edit that. But again, uh, I really never use this footer. I always build one in the theme builder. And as I say, we'll, we'll do that on an early lesson. But in case you do want to use this uh, for getting started, that's how it works. And um, we can click on publish. So that's dealt with footer buttons. Uh, again, I wouldn't set up your button styles in here. We'll do all of that in Divi. Although, you know, if you want, you can set up a default button. No, honestly, we're not going to go there. We're going to do all of this in Divi. Um, same with the uh, blog. We're going to do that in Divi. Uh, we're going to do all the color schemes, uh, everything. We're going to do everything in Divi. Um, we're not going to deal with any of the other settings on this page and all will become clear later on. OK, so we can now come out of this. We can I've already save these changes. We can come back to our site and we are finally ready to start building our first page. 
and we're not going to do that today we're going to do that in the next lesson and the first one i'm working on is to do with section rows columns and modules i'll tell you what let's just load one page so i'm just going to use a, a template just so you can see what a page looks like and how easy it is to put a cage together so to do that we're going to go into the dashboard pages all pages the page we want to have a look at is home page and the really important thing is we don't click on edit but we click on edit with divi and this will take us into the divi builder now if we go with um choose a pre-made layout we will get the layout packs um where are we we're up to 2299 total layouts in 312 packs and there are so many layouts in here um, people get a bit sniffy about using pre-made layouts but once you choose one of these you've got so many customization options that you can really make the layout completely your own and it's a really good way to get started so i'm actually going to go into art and design um, i'm going to pick what am i going to pick I don't see the one I'm looking for. Oh, here we go. Uh, Creative Design Agency. I'm going to click on that layout pack and we are building a home page. So I'm going to click on home and I'm going to say use this layout. So what this is going to do is it's going to import all of the graphics, all of the Divi elements, uh, all of the images, and it's going to place them on our page. And once it's finished doing that, uh, the page will appear. So interestingly, um, Divi has decided that it doesn't want to load this sample page. And this can happen to the best of us, but I will now run over how we can get out of it. So I'm going to go into the dashboard and I'm going to discard my saved changes. I'm going to come down to Divi and I'm going to come into theme options and performance options. And sometimes this does cause issues with loading some of the pages. I'm going to disable every single one of these performance options and I'm going to click on save changes. I'm then going to go back to my site. I'm going to go back to my home page, click on edit with Divi. Once again, I'm going to go with choose a pre-made layout, art and design. This time I remember, scroll down to the bottom, creative agency, go with the home page and use this layout. And this time the layout has loaded. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen all the time, but it does happen occasionally. And if it does, I've just shown you a workaround. So there we go. So here we have a page. Um, I'm not going to do editing on that today because I'm going to leave that for next time. I'm going to click on save here. I'm going to come out of the visual builder and we have a page. I must admit the color scheme is not quite what we want, um, but it gives you an idea of how quickly you can bring in a sample page from from Divi. Here is the, the footer that we edited earlier. Um, here is the header we created. You can now see that when we scroll, the menu bar shrinks. And that was the settings that can be adjusted in the header and navigation, fixed navigation settings. So once we go into this fixed navigation, so if we scroll up a bit to make that happen, we can actually change the fixed menu. So you can see we could make the fixed menu even smaller if we wanted to, um, and we can make the text size even smaller. And this is just for the fixed menu. So I've made that nice and small now, and I'm going to click on Publish. And if I then come out of that, we can see that as we scroll, we get a nice little small menu at the top. OK, well, this has been quite a long one, but I hope you found this tutorial useful. We've just really started scratching the surface. I've shown you how I set up Divi on a new installation. In the next tutorial, I'm going to start looking at how you can build your own pages. First thing we're going to be looking at is section, rows, columns and modules. And from then on, I'm going to go through each module in turn in a separate tutorial. Um, it's going to take me a little while to put all of those together. So unless you're looking at this uh, video somewhat late in 2024, you're probably only seeing this or maybe this and a couple of other videos. But I am going to make all of the other lessons. I hope you found this useful. Please do like and subscribe and please do leave me a comment. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.